save a tree once in a while. In fact, I have, I think I have two of this, so I don't know if you need an extra. Because I had one from earlier, Jim gave me. Yeah. Yeah. James Foster. Where is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good, good, good. James Foster. Summary of everything you've done, or kind of recaps. You buy one cough drop, women? If I was to even quantify, that's what I'd like to quantify everything you do. We all set, Mr. Secretary? We are, Mr. Chair. We are ready. Meeting will please come to order. This is a duly advertised meeting of the Juliet Stoning Board of Appeals. In our capacity, we hear petitions for variations of land use. And for the strict uh, for the relief from the strict provisions of our city ordinance, in matters of this type, the decision of this board is final. In respect, it does not go to the mayor or the city council for any further action. We also hear petitions for variations of land use. In matters of this type, we act as an advisory committee to the mayor and city council, making a recommendation either for or against it. The final decision on land use is made by the mayor and the city council. <coughs> Secretary, pull the board, please. Ms. Darley? Mr. Ferguson? Here. Mr. Graham? Here. Ms. Powers? Mr. Riggs? Here. Mr. Thompson? Here. Mr. Hennessy? Here. And Ms. Darley? Here. Okie doke. <laughs> Alfredo and Marcel Aguirre, are they here? Yes. Petition 2018-06. Mr. Chair, petition number 2018-06, the applicant is Alfredo and Merced Aguirre, also the owner of the property. <coughs> Location is 509 and 511 Franklin Street. This is a request for a series of setback variations, a variation on minimum lot area per family, reduced from 7,500 square feet to 3,270 square feet, and a variation to have three main structures on one lot in order to allow the continuation of three existing single family structures. The requested setback variations are front yard <coughs> setback reduced from 30 feet to 3.8 feet, and side yard setback from six feet to 1.4 feet for 509 Franklin on the front, and then the rear yard setback from 25 feet reduced to 5.5 feet and side yard setback reduced from eight feet to six feet for 509 Franklin on the rear. Front yard setback reduced from 30 feet to 4.1 feet for 511 Franklin Street and side yard setback from three feet reduced to 0 0.3 feet for the detached garage. The zoning board makes the final decision for the variation requests. Under site specific information, the lot is 66 feet by 148.65 or 9,810 square feet. It contains three single family homes and one detached garage. According to available city directory data, the two front addresses, 509 and 511, have existed since around 1906. 
Uh, the rear address has existed since around 1920. In 1990, the owner at the time requested a variation of use to allow three structures on one lot, and the case was tabled by staff as no plans were submitted. The existing zoning is R4 multifamily residential. The petition was filed on January 3rd of 2018. Under surrounding zoning, land use, and character, to the north is residential R-2 single family. To the east is residential R-2 and R-3 one and two family residential and to the south is residential zoned r2 and r3 and to the west as well as the residential zoned r2 and r-3 applicable regulations are as noted in the report under discussion again the, re the request for the variations and, and and allowing three structures on one lot and to allow continuation of them uh, is requested the property currently contains two one-story single-family homes at the front and a two-story single-family home at the rear along with one detached garage again the two homes have existed since 1906 and the rear home has existed since around 1920. the, the owner currently occupies one home and rents out the other two homes and is in the process of joining the neighborhood services rental inspection program an inspector from neighborhood services division has inspected the property and produced a list of current violations which is attached, attached to your report. The owner wishes to apply for building permits in order to abate the violations. The city requires that the owner first obtain the requested variations in order to be compliant with the zoning ordinance prior, before the owner can apply for the building permits. The zoning ordinance states that there may not be more than one main structure on a lot. Additionally, all three structures have non-conforming setbacks. Therefore, the property needs the variations as noted. The property already has multifamily zoning, which permits the existing multifamily use. The site has adequate parking for three single family structures and a plan of survey is attached. If the zoning board desires to approve the variations, the following conditions would be included. One, that any existing violations from the recent neighborhood services inspection are repaired within 30 days. Two, that the property not be expanded in the future. Three, that off street parking <coughs> remains in the future. Four, that the owner participate in the city's landlord <coughs> training and tenant screening programs. And five, should the property de be declared a public nuisance, it shall be subject to a rehearing and a possible revocation of the variations. That concludes staff's report. Okay, who's gonna be talking here? I must swear you went. You swear the evidence you're about to present is the truth under penalty of law. Yes, sir, I do. Your name and address. James Foster, 1107 Garvin. I'm owner of New Frontier Electrical, electrical contract. You're the owner firm. of all three? No, I'm the owner. Um, I'm hired by the client here okay. to uh, ensure that all of the violations on this property are repaired and up to city code. Um, just a brief summary. The Vargas family and Alfredo uh, has lived there since 1990. The family's raised there. The mother still resides there. There are three structures on the property, two of which have been vacant. Um, they follow the guidelines of the um, Neighborhood Services Committee in hiring a licensed bonded insured contractor such as myself to ensure that all of the repairs are made. Um, just to let you know that we will fully comply <coughs> with all of the um, stipulations that are set forth by the Zoning Board with regards to the Rental uh, Assistance Committee and all the other um, things that you guys are required. Um, I got kind of involved there because we went down to get a permit, not knowing that all of those structures, we thought that they were all grandfathered in some time ago when they purchased the property, but we find out that they're not. And this is um, really a financial burden on the mother here. Um, the property has been vacant for well over eight months now, you know, and it's, it's really created a financial strain on the family. And like I said, that uh, stated before, that I will ensure that all work is done up to code and anything that the uh, zoning board wishes the family to comply with, I'm sure they will <coughs> more than do so. Thank you. Okay, uh, we got about four pages of things wrong here. Have they started doing any repairs? Yes, sir, we did. Uh, I have um, over 90% of the electrical is already uh, completed. Um, we did so because I knew I know the people down in the city's uh, building department 
And um, it, while I was waiting on the process of the building permit, I just started because there was an inspection coming and we were in the court and it was in the court phases of things. Um, there's also been some things that we've talked to with the city with regards to uh, when you enter one of the properties, there's a bathroom that you enter into and there's an exit outside exit door there, which they've grandfathered in. So we're working with the city, with um, the building department. Well, my question is probably clo more close related if financially, if this is going to be feasible for them to do with that many violations rather than the timeline. Well, y yes, they have already given me a down payment. Um, and I've, I'm paid almost in full. You know, the only thing that's left is the retention. Like I say, the, the majority of the things there are um, electrical in nature. Okay. I don't see any reference here to, uh, are those paved over there or that highways or I don't see any landscaping of any kind. Is no, the, the, the two, the two um, off-street parking areas are the two in front of the two blue residences there. There's a side driveway along the house to the right that the family stays in, in the rear structure. You can't really see it clearly there. Are those paved? Yes. yes. They are, okay. Are we requiring any landscaping of any kind, or is that not in the question? Uh, that is not part of the conditions. Uh, they do. Is there any front yard there at all? Or is that all concrete? I it's can't just, see from the picture. That's part of the parkway. Any you can, by the board? If you wanted, to, at your discretion, you have the ability to add uh, greening up the what, what property they would own in the front. Obviously not in the right of way, but you could, you could add that as a condition. Um, but there are five conditions noted in your, in your report. And the, I think the survey plat in your report shows the paved areas of the site. Oh, okay. Any other questions for the board? No? Ever anything? Anybody in the audience wish to speak in favor? Is there anyone opposed? Chair closes the petition. Ask the board for discussion and a vote. Motion to approve. Second. Subject to the conditions? Subject to the conditions no. stated. We have a motion, a second to approve the petition. Call, pull the board, please. Mr. Graham? Aye. Mr. Riggs? Aye. Mr. Thompson? Aye. Ms. Darley? Aye. Mr. Ferguson? Aye. Mr. Hennessy? Aye. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, Georgiana Cisneros, petition 2018-07. Mr. Chair, petition number 2018-07, the applicant and owner of the property is Georgina Cisneros. The location is 826 Gardner Street and 107 Elm Street. Similar to the previous case, this is a request for a variation of use and a series of variations. This is a variation of use and a series of variations to allow the continuation of two single family residences in an R2A single family zoning district on one lot located at 826 Gardner and 107 Elm Street. The variation of use request must be considered by the city council following the recommendation of the zoning board of appeals. Under site specific information, the lot is 13,713 square feet. Available Polk, Joliet Polk directories the house, or per those directories, the houses at 826 Gardner and 107 Elm were built prior to 1930. The lot with the two homes was annexed and zoned R-2A in 1979. This case was filed January 5th of 2018. Surrounding zoning, land use, and character are R-2A single family residential to the north and south. To the east, Will County R-5, which is residential uh, in unincorporated Will County. And to the west is I-1 Light Industrial, which is an auto salvage yard. Applicable regulations are as noted in your report. Under discussion, the property participates in the city's neighborhood services rental inspection program. Both properties are currently vacant. The property owner is working with neighborhood services as well as the building department to abate code violations and seeks the requested variation of use and the variations to complete the work. The zoning ordinance allows only one main building per lot. The property in question contains two houses on one lot. Therefore, the applicant is requesting a variation of use. The one-story house at 826 Gardner is 1,276 square feet and includes a 528 square foot detached garage. The one-story house at 107 Elm Street is a 676 square foot house and includes a small 216 square foot shed. According to Joliet Polk directories, both homes were built prior to 1930. 
The lot with the two homes was annexed and zoned R2A single family in 1979. And at that time, the owners of 826 Gardner Street rented the house at 107 Elm Street to their daughter-in-law. Using available information, staff was unable to determine if or when the two homes were on separate lots. The zoning ordinance requires two off-street parking spaces per single family home, a condition for approval, as well as the issuance of a certificate of occupancy, is that the required off-street parking be created. The property has adequate space to accommodate the required off-street parking within the garage and future or existing drive, future slash existing driveways. All driveways must be paved, and this has also been made a condition of the approval. The applicant is requesting a series of variations to be granted to absolve the following non-conformities for the two houses and accessory structures on one lot, front setbacks, garage setbacks, shed setbacks, and minimum lot size per family. And that concludes staff's report, except for if, you are, if the zoning board desires to approve the variation of use and variations, the following conditions would be included. One, that all code violations be abated within 180 days of approval in conjunction with the issuance of a certificate of occupancy. Two, that the off-street parking spaces be created per single family home. I'm sorry, that two off-street parking spaces per, be created per single family home prior to issuance of a certificate of occupancy. And three, that all off-street parking spaces and driveways shall be paved within 180 days of approval. Four, that, that the water line be separated to result in a separate line for each house within 180 days of approval. Four, uh, five, that the property not be expanded in the future. Six, that the property participate in the rental inspection program if the property is not owner occupied. Seven, that off-street parking remains in the future. And eight, that should the property be declared a public nuisance, it shall be subject to a rehearing and a possible revocation of the variation of use. That concludes staff's report. Thank you. Ms. Ware, the evidence your part present is the truth on the penalty of law. Yes, sir. Name and address. We have Snarrows, 621 Sandal. Okay, any comments you'd like to make, sir? Yeah, um, my daughter bought this property for uh, intentions of her moving into one house and her sister is 22 and she planned to move into the other house. They're my daughters, I'm their father. Uh, that was the idea when we bought the house, we didn't know it had these problems, but it's not a major issue. We could, what we hear that he needs, that needs to be fixed, we don't have a problem with. Uh, and we grew up down the street, 621 is where we grew up. We like the neighborhood. We think we can fix them up and raise our families there. Okay, thank you. Questions from the board? Everyone happy? Anyone in the audience wishing to speak in favor? Anyone opposed? Chair closes the petition and asks the board for discussion and a motion. Motion to approve the set conditions. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the petition. Please call the roll. Mr. Riggs? Aye. Mr. Thompson? Aye. Mr. Arling? Aye. Mr. Ferguson? Aye. Mr. Graham? Aye. Mr. Hennessy? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Cherry Hill Business Association Park. Anybody here? Petition 2018-08. Mr. Chair, Petition 2018-08. The applicant and owner is Cherry Hill Joliet Business Park, LLC. Location is 1101 Cherry Hill Road. The request is for a series of variations to allow construction of an addition to the existing cold storage warehouse, which is located at the southwest corner of Cherry Hill Road and New Lenox Road. The variations are for relief on masonry building material, maximum allowed trailer parking, and fencing material around a detention pond. And this type of re these requests would stop with the zoning board. These, these would not need to go on to the city council. Under site-specific information, the subject lot is Lot 2 of Cherry Hill Business Park subdivision. There is an attached plat of survey. It contains approximately 24.3 acres and is zoned I-1 Light Industrial District. Similar variances on building material, maximum allowed trailer parking, and fencing material around a retention pond were approved by the Zoning Board at their meeting of February 21, 2013 for Lot Number 1. The original building, which was 455 by 507 feet, was constructed in August 2013, and another addition, at, which was 517 by 395 feet, was constructed in April of 2016. This petition was filed January 5th of 2018. Surrounding zoning, land use, and character, 
To the north is residential, unincorporated Will County. To the east is industrial, I-1 in the city of Joliet. To the south is industrial, I-1, Joliet. And to the west is undeveloped residential in unincorporated Will County. Applicable regulations are as noted in your report. Under discussion, due to the unique operation of the warehouse and the existing lot configuration and siting circumstances, the petitioner is requesting approval of a series of variations in order to in order to allow the third addition to the Joliet Cold Storage Building, which would be 311,894 square feet, um, or I should say 311,894 square feet of the 381,302 square foot warehouse space will be devoted to additional freezer space. And there is a floor plan in your packet. Uh, that would be used for cold storage of food products. The freezer use does not allow for the typical exterior building material that would be utilized on a dry storage building. The petitioner plans to use an insulated metal wall panel that repl replicates a precast concrete wall panel, but is more typical for a cold storage building. Additionally, the petitioner is requesting approval to construct a six foot black vinyl coated chain link fence in lieu of a decorative wrought iron fence as is more characteristic of an industrial development. Lastly, the building configuration as it is located along the west property line provides a buffer to the adjacent residential, but that pushes the truck parking up front, which is not in line with code for accessory truck parking. A site plan and building elevations of the proposed addition are attached. Adequate off street parking, stormwater detention and landscaping will be provided as is required by city ordinance. That concludes staff's report. Thank you. Now, one one thing. Hands. You swear the evidence your box presents the truth under penalty of law. Okay, names and addresses. Andy Burns, address. I'll come to the mic. We have to record all this. Andy Burns, address is 1101 Cherry Hill Road. Larry Lantero, 5430 St. Charles Road, Berkeley, Illinois. Okay, who's going to convince us? I'll convince you. <laughs> okay. Uh, essentially, all the variances we're asking for are identical to the same variances we asked for in 2013 when we built the Phase One uh, property, and it's just consistent with those same variances. I can go into detail if you'd like me to, but yeah, do you want to? Yeah, I can't hear you. I'm sorry, that's it in a nutshell. I can go into more detail if you'd like me to, but uh, um, <laughs> we're just basically asking for the same <coughs> variances that we asked for in Phase One. I want to explain what is this vinyl coated chain link? What exactly is that? It, it, it matches identically to the chain link fencing that's installed that's on phase now. one. And it's, uh, so it's what, an economic issue or what? Uh, it certainly has something to do with economics. Um, but, you know, we just didn't see a point. It's in the back of the building. It's not along the frontage road, along Cherry Hill Road. And it provides the proper screening that you want? Correct. Okay. Any questions by the board? Will there be more expansion after this? No, we're out of room. Okay, I was wondering, I'm looking at the photograph here. <laughs> unless he can buy something, line. you know. Yeah. Uh, the owner of the property, Dominic Stramaglia, I, I never say no, you know. Um, there is vacant land available to the west, and uh, you know, who knows what he might do in the future. But uh, as far as what he owns right now, this is it, we can't do any more. Any other comments? Anyone in the audience wish to speak in favor? Is there anyone opposed? Once again, the chair closes the petition to the floor and asks the board for discussion and a motion. I move for approval, Mr. Chairman. Second. Well, we're all agreeable today. Yeah, nice. Especially if you can keep your, keep, your, <laughs> keep your fingers crossed. We have a motion and a second to approve the petition. Call the roll. Mr. Thompson? Aye. Ms. Darley? Aye. Mr. Ferguson? Aye. Mr. Graham? Aye. Mr. Riggs? Aye. Mr. Hennessy? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay, petition 2018-09, Lonnie Locke. Uh, actually, 2018-09 is uh, Brandon Road. Pardon me? 2018-09 is the center, another center, a center point project on Brandon Road. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Locke would be the last, the final. Oh, okay. Oh, have a seat. So what do you want to wait? No. Nine. 
Center Point. Yeah. Okay. We oh. want Center Point up here. Yeah, Center Point. 2018-09. Center Point Joliet Terminal Railroad LLC uh, and Illinois LLC is the applicant and owner of the property. This is at 3900 Brandon Road. The petitioner is requesting a variation to allow additional tractor trailer parking that exceeds the maximum allowed, one space per every 1,500 square feet of ground floor area of the principal building. Under site-specific information, the 190-acre subject site comprises three lots within the Center Point Intermodal Center subdivision. The 751,622 square foot building was constructed on lot 33 in 2016. 501,313 square feet within the building is currently leased. Another 250,309 square foot of available space is under contract by a Fortune 50 company that is currently located within the Center Point Industrial Campus. The existing zoning is I-TC, which is Intermodal Terminal Dash Warehouse. This case was filed on January 5th of 2018. Surrounding zoning, land use, and character to the north is Joli Save Joliet Industrial ITC category. To the east is undeveloped, unincorporated Will County. To the south is undeveloped I-TA zoning. And to the west is undeveloped ITC zoning. Applicable regulations are, are as noted in the staff report. Under discussion, the approval of the requested variation on tractor trailer parking will allow the leasable building space and the site to be competitive in attracting and retaining an, an industrial user. The additional overflow parking areas that are shown on your site plan in your packet will allow the site to add an additional 187 spaces beyond what the code allows, which is one space for every 1,500 square feet of ground floor area. The proposed locations for the new truck parking areas are at the east of the existing warehouse and south along Millsdale Road. The south parking area happens to be somewhat of a remnant piece of land for the park and could not support a typical warehouse development on its own. The proposed industrial user is currently in the Center Point Industrial Park and continues to need additional warehouse space and truck parking locations nearby. That concludes staff's report. Thank you. Mr. Hanson. Oh, I want to make one uh, mention of an addendum, which I don't know yeah, if you... Yeah, there was an addendum. Yeah, I don't know if you saw a copy of it. Um, after the writing of the report, it was discovered that the tractor total tractor-trailer parking spaces uh, being proposed is 729, which is then 228 spaces above what the code allows. I think the report actually uh, had a, a slightly different number. But again, it's per the proposal is 729 trailer spaces. And there is an attached site plan with the addendum, and there's an updated table for further reference. Thank you. That's where the evidence you're about to present is the truth under penalty of law. Yes, sir, I do. Name and address, please. Uh, good afternoon, Your Honor. Michael Hansen, 111 North Otto Street, on behalf of the petitioner, Center Point Properties. Uh, we uh, concur in the staff recommendation and would uh, request the approval of our petition. That's it. That's our, that's our oh, petition. Not getting paid by the hour. Okay. Any questions by the board? <coughs> Any comments? It's all self-explanatory. Anybody in the audience wish to speak in favor? Anyone opposed? Moving right along. Chair closes petition to the floor and asks the board for discussion and a motion. Motion to approve. I second. We do have a motion and a second to approve the petition. Call the roll. Ms. Darley? Aye. Mr. Ferguson? Aye. Mr. Graham? Aye. Mr. Riggs? Aye. Mr. Thompson? Aye. Mr. Hennessy? Aye. Thank you Thank very you. much. Now we come to Mr. Locke, 2018-10. Petition 2018-10, the applicant of the uh, uh, the applicant and also the pros business owner is Lonnie Locke doing business as Band-Aid Massage Therapy. Owner of the property is Parish Patel. Location is 600 Theodore Street, Unit 100. This is a request for a special use permit to allow massage therapy services within a tenant space at 600 Theodore Street, which is a multi-tenant commercial building located on the south side of Theodore Street between Lawrence Avenue and Clement Street. This request must be considered by the City Council following the recommendation of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Under site-specific information, the property in question is approximately 0.95 acres in size. 
It is 145.41 feet deep and 279.94 feet wide along Theodore Street. The unit in question, Unit 100, is located on the east end of the building and is 950 square feet. The property in question is zoned B3 General Business District. The shopping center contains 54 off-street parking spaces. This case was filed on January 5th of 2018. <clears throat> Under surrounding zoning, land use, and character, to the north is the City of Crest Hill B2 General Business District, which is commercial, Marishka's Restaurant. To the south is B3 General Business District, and, and that's vacant, zoned R3, one and two family residential, uh, vacant land. To the east is B3 General Business District, and that's a gas station that was uh, recently va or been vacant and possibly going to be reopened at some point. Uh, to the west is B3 General Business District Retail, and that is uh, the Dollar General, Bailey's Carpet One, Michelin's Liquors, Remco Medical, and Mudron Kane Insurance. Applicable regulations are as noted in the staff report. Under discussion, the City of Joliet Zoning Ordinance states that massage therapy facilities require a special use permit approval. Therefore, the petitioner is requesting approval of a special use permit to allow massage therapy services within a tenant space located at 600 Theodore Street. Therapeutic massage and pain management services will be provided within five separate therapy rooms as shown on the submitted floor plan. Additionally, there will be three employees, including the applicant. Eventually, additional employees may be added so that up to five therapy rooms could be in use at the same time. The 950 square foot tenant space will include a reception and waiting area, an employee break room, and a restroom. Stated hours of operation are 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday through Sunday. The property includes adequate off-street parking to accommodate the proposed use. Other tenants in the building will include a State Farm Insurance Office, Oakton Medical Associates and Nine Dart Out, which is a dart game supply business. There are four other vacant tenant spaces. Uh, if the zoning board desires to approve this special use permit, the following conditions would be included. One, that the special use granted shall herein terminate and lapse unless a building permit or certificate of occupancy is obtained not later than 180 days of the effective date of the ordinance. And I'm not gonna read the rest, but the rest of condition number one is standard language. Uh, condition number two, should the property be declared a public nuisance, it shall be subject to a rehearing and possible revocation of the special use permit. And three, that a business license shall be obtained. And that concludes staff's report. Okay. Ready? Uh, uh, raise your hand, please. No, sure. I swear you win. Do you swear the evidence you're about present is the truth under penalty of law? Yes, sir. Your name and address, please. 604 Nicholson Street, Joliet, Illinois. Okay, any comments you'd like to make, sir? Well, I brought uh, a presentation, something that you could thumb through really quick with me, if that's you okay. You care to, sure. I'm going with uh, a membership contract free business model, gratuity free. The problem that we have with franchises, they're already underpaying the help that they have, and I'm going to pay my help what they're worth so we could avoid, you know, unnecessary cost. And we're going to be, we're family owned. We offer year round low fixed rates for law enforcement and military, not just one day out of the year. Um, How about senior citizens? Yes, well, of course, there's always something. Because right now, as, um, as of uh, April 1st, every major franchise will be charging $70 for a 50-minute hands-on. I do 60 minutes hands-on, and we do a 10-minute preheat if necessary. And we have to have room after the session, so if there's any kind of follow-up treatment like uh, self-care, if I have to walk you through some stretches. A franchise, they don't leave you a lot of room to do that in their schedule. Uh, we have large, life-size anatomical models of the musculoskeletal anatomy, including nerves. So it's going to be a hands-on experience. Uh, we have a media center we're going to put hands in. Hands-on and massaging. Uh, well, I mean, you know, the, the uh, models, so you, you know why when you're experiencing nerve pain in your wrist while I'm working around the elbow, okay? Uh, we're going to have a media center linked to our YouTube channel. I record and direct and produce all my own videos. 
Um, depending on your finances, I could work on a sliding scale to become more accessible. Right now, I already have people uh, that it takes everything they have just to get in that one time a month, and it's the gratuity that tell you know that that keeps them from coming in. So we're going to eliminate that, and we're going to keep things low and fixed because the treatment is what we're focused on, not contracts and credit card numbers. Um, we accept most flex spending accounts. It really comes down to your insurance and what they expect. Some people acknowledge or uh, recognize therapeutic massage. Not everybody does. I don't have any control over that. Um, I have a vetting process for my therapist that nobody else can touch. What I do, I can find that really quick here. Yeah, I also... It's important to understand that every franchise owner is nothing more than a financial backer and what they view as a highly profitable business. They know little to nothing about the industry, and the industry's standard model for a new hire is simple. A hands-on practical, and they often place you on a schedule before your background check goes through, which I have a problem with. Along with the background check, the new prospective therapist will perform a 10-point assessment on a person of my choice. First, I will assess this person and take notes. I have to agree with 8 out of 10 points before they can work on me. Uh, I, I uh, don't hire students. I only hire cream of the crop. I know a lot of great therapists out there that just don't get paid what they're worth. Um, and I drug test. I will never have anybody under the influence on my staff, period. Um, we have a floating appointment plan, so sometimes we get held up in traffic and you might end up losing a few minutes. You don't have to worry about that with me because I'm setting up the appointment so there's a little bit of a buffer. If you run behind, you're still going to get your full hands-on session. And, uh, you know, depending on what we determine is going to be uh, necessary for your next appointment, I'll have you come in 10 minutes early on my side of the clock, and we'll get you into a treatment room, put you under hydroculator packs. Yes. Uh, what kind of credentials are required for in your business there? Is there state requirements or licensing? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, well, yeah, I, yeah, I carry a, a certification for uh, massage therapy, and I also have a certification for uh, medical uh, massage. And I work strictly with nerve impingement because, in my experience... You have all those licenses. Oh, yes, oh, yes, well, you have to. And I, I actually work at a place out in Woodridge right now, and people are canceling right now because the rates are going up, and they were already struggling. Uh, have you, where else do you, have you operated out of? Right now, I'm running a, a. I'm functioning as a mobile service. Uh, I've got three units out there right now. I've got some very good people uh, work in the field, uh, but right now, demand is starting to increase to the point where it just makes sense to get a brick and mortar now. So, what we wanted to offer for people uh, in the local area, we have a uh, customer service car, a pickup car, so we could shuttle you back and forth, you know, within like five, 10 miles or something like that. We wouldn't charge additional, but anything over that, it'd have to be something, you know. Um, but it's about the treatment. So this is what, this is a franchise operation? No, this is not a franchise. This is an independent business. This is an independent grassroots business. I like the name Band-Aid. That doesn't sound too uh, reassuring. <laughs> well, you know what, actually, it started, I, being a, I've been a musician for over 20 years, uh, and I started off with my focus on musicians. Is that where the but, band comes from? Is yeah, band around? aid, like I help musicians or whatever, okay. but it turns out that most musicians are broke, so I end up working sure on their parents and their, you know, other people like that. And uh, what I do is I, I just started expanding and doing other things. Uh, I like working with nerve impingements, migraine headaches, sciatic condition. I'm telling you, I can stop what is your, your training, pain. actually. Pardon me? What is your background training in this? My, yeah, I've been a massage therapist for going on five years now. Okay, that's yeah. not so Any other questions by the board here? Mr. Chair, I'm just going to mention for the record, um, you asked about the license. We, in the packet, we provided a copy of the, uh, the state's, uh, the, you can go on the state's Depart the Department of Financial and Professional Regulation. They we, confirmed. Confirm. Yeah, Mr. Locke is, is a licensed massage therapist in the state of Illinois. So. Thank you. That's good. Any comments or other questions by the board? Anybody in the audience wishes to speak in favor? Anyone opposed? 
Chair, close the petition floor and ask the board for discussion and a motion. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and second to approve the petition. Please call the roll. Mr. Ferguson? Aye. Mr. Graham? Aye. Mr. Riggs? Aye. Mr. Thompson? Aye. Ms. Darley? Aye. Mr. Hennessy? Aye. Aye. Thank you, sir. All right, and thank just you. Just for Mr. Locke's information, this will, this case would go to the City Council for the, at their first meeting in March, so I'll be in touch with you on the exact dates and times. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, under new business, what is this end of year report? Uh, this is a new thing that we're doing, uh, and I want to give kudos to staff, uh, specifically Ms. Jane Bernhardt, for pulling all this information together. Uh, we think it's good with all the work that you uh, folks do on our as volunteers on our zoning board uh, to kind of get a nice summary, a package of information at the end of the year, telling you, quantifying all the things that you have touched, that you've reviewed, that you've considered. We know that it's a lot of time. You take a lot of time to visit the sites. You read our reports. Obviously, the meetings take time, but I think this helps quantify it, and it's information that we would like, after you uh, uh, endorse it, or we would like to uh, send it on to our city council. It's provided to you as information only, but I'm not aware that we've done this in the past, and, and obviously it's something we want to do with all of our boards and, and commissions to help quantify the, by the numbers all the things that you touch and all the things that you do each year. Okay. So any questions about the report or comments or concerns? We're happy to tweak the format, um, but again, Jane Bernhard put a lot of time into this, and um, I think it's a really nice. We did, we did a, she did a similar report for our. Uh, she's also secretary to our Historic Preservation Commission, and summarized. Uh, in that case, the report is required by the state of Illinois, as our for our, to keep our certified local government status. Um, in the in the in the zoning board, it's not a requirement, but it's something I think that's helpful. So you can kind of look back at each year and see all the cases that you worked on. We also have attendance records. I'll, you'll notice that we've got attendance, so that's that's important uh, uh, as a as uh, just like Maybe we do. We're racing blackboards if we don't make it. Or <laughs> it's it's. Um, if there's any criticism, I want it to be minimal, and we want all the praise we can get. <laughs> so it's it's sure up that's here. all in there. But we appreciate the work uh, that all of you do. So this is a summary of your work. Okay. Thanks, Jen. Thank you. Thank you. Under old business, petition 201802. Mr. Chair, petition 201802, as you mentioned, is old business. This was uh, tabled at the previous meeting. The applicant is Seguros LLC. Owner is the same. Uh, location is 1350 through 1358 East Jefferson Street. Um, there is, as attached to your report, is the original staff report and addendum that were provided at the Zoning um, zoning Board of Appeals uh, meeting on January 18th. Also attached are the minutes of the January 18th meeting. And at the request of the Zoning Board, the petitioner hired an engineer to conduct a traffic analysis within and around the site. Uh, this, will, this was provided as part of the addendum, which you've also received uh, on your dais. And I'll just summarize. Uh, the, I, don't, I don't think I'm going to reread the report that was read into the record the prior meeting. But what I'll do is just summarize the addendum that you have before you. Yeah, just bring us just bring us up to date because so we've the been through this once before. Addendum dated February 14th, uh, 2018, uh, is a uh, mentions the traffic analysis, and the traffic analysis plan was prepared by Rudiger Tonelli and Associates Incorporated. It should be noted that as an additional concession by the petitioner, um, the one remaining curb cut on Midland Avenue will be designed with a right in, right out only option. Um, this proposed change is an added measure to make the future site safer and accommodate the wishes of the adjacent neighbors. Uh, therefore, if the variation uh, variances are to be approved by the Zoning Board of Appeals, the following uh, newer, newer uh, conditions would be added. One, that the proposed building comply with the city's non-residential design standards ordinance. Two, that a landscape and fence plan be submitted and approved by staff as part of the future building permit. Three, that the existing pylon sign, formerly Bob and Sis, uh, Sis's, uh, be relocated and modified in order to meet current code. Four, that customer and employee parking be retained on their lot only and not overflow onto adjacent commercial properties. Five, that the one and only curb cut on Midland Avenue be maintained as a right in, right out curb cut. And six, should the business be declared a public nuisance, it shall be subject 
to a, a rehearing and possible revocation of their city business license. And that concludes uh, staff's re summary. Okay, do you want to read uh, the variations that are requested into the minutes just for? Sure. In the original report, I'll mention um, that the proposal, okay, let me find the paragraph. Just the purpose part of it. So the purpose is the following variations on the number of required parking spaces, the reduction from 19 to 16, on building setback from the center line of Jefferson Street from 80 feet to 72 feet, on landscaping adjacent to a residential use from 15 feet to 6 feet, and on landscaping along the street from 10 feet to 5 feet in order to con allow construction of a new drive through restaurant. The Zoning Board of, of Appeals makes the final decision for the variation request. Is anything changed in those with these new addendums or anything? There, to my knowledge, nothing has changed. Very it's consistent. the same site plan other than the right-in, right-out curb cut. Okay, thank you. Mr. Hanson, you've been sworn in. Make your presentation. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Hennessy, members of the Commission. First of all, I'd like to make a couple introductions if I can. Uh, Mr. Spiros is here, the uh, owner of the property with his wife also here, Dennis and Bob Zenos, the architects for the property. We have Joseph Hammer from Rudiger and Tonelli who's done the traffic analysis. Thank you, Mike, for reading the variances because that's what I was going to start out with so we all knew what we were talking about here today. What I'd like to do first is ask Mr. Hammer to come up here and make a very brief presentation on the traffic analysis which was requested by the uh, zoning board at the last <coughs> meeting. You swear the evidence you're about to present is the truth under penalty of law. I do. Name and address, please. Joseph Hammer, Rudiger, Tonelli & Associates, 129 Capista Drive, Shorewood. Uh, we've been uh, retained to assess the site um, for uh, the Nick's Euros, um, noting specific traffic. Um, the development team worked very closely with city staff to prepare a plan that provided um, a safer situation. Currently. Uh, three access points are located along Midland and two along Jefferson Street. Um, both those sides have been limited to one access each, a full access on Jefferson Street, and as mentioned, um, even more limited to a right in, right out on Midland. Um, both of those access points have been shifted as far east and south as possible to prevent uh, or to move them away from the main intersection of Jefferson and and uh, Midland Avenue. <clears throat> Circulation on the site um, has been set up in a, in a one-way manner so that uh, adequate stacking could be provided at the uh, message or the menu board as well as beyond the menu board up to the uh, service window. Um, parking itself, uh, data provided by the owner um, indicated that we had uh, two peak hours or two areas of peak traffic between 11 and 1 and between 5.30 and 7. Um, How does that correspond to the school hours there in the yard? School hours, uh, the a.m. Uh, begin is 8 a.m. for the uh, junior high and 9 a.m. for the um, intermediate. And then we have... Um, two and three in the afternoon. So the peak hours for the restaurant um, offset from the peak hours from the school. Not compatible, right? Correct. Um, <clears throat> as I was saying, uh, the information provided by the owner for the peak uh, lunchtime crowd as well as the evening crowd matched up very well with um, Institute of Traffic Engineering uh, studies that are done for similar sites, fast food restaurants with uh, drive up windows. Um, somewhere between 80 cars in the two-hour period. Uh, the ITE manual indicates that the peak uh, PM would be somewhere around 60 cars. Um, the breakdown for those cars themselves, we are expecting somewhere in the vicinity of 65% would be using the drive-through. and uh, The remaining 35% would be dine-in. Um, that creates uh, 21 potential dine-in uh, customers at the site over an hour period. Um, fast food restaurants do see a quite a bit of turnover 
Um, generally speaking, people aren't staying at the restaurant very long and dining, an average of somewhere around 20 minutes, possibly, um, some shorter, some longer, obviously. Um, so breaking that down over an hour period, you're looking at a peak somewhere around seven uh, dining customers at any one 20 minute period. Um, the site itself, the, the restaurant is expected to have three employees per shift uh, that would require 10 stalls between employees and the peak hour for the uh, dine-in guests, um, leaving somewhere in the vicinity of five spaces uh, for the adjacent office building or additional parking for uh, dine-in guests. Um, so in conclusion, we believe the very specific pattern provided on site for traffic uh, limits access, provides additional safety. Uh, the parking um, is sufficient according to studies prepared by the Inter um, Institute of Traffic Engineers uh, and the data that was provided to us by the, by the client and the expectation of uh, business at the site. So Did you do any projections on the percentages that would be coming <coughs> off of uh, Jefferson Street as opposed to Midland? We didn't do any specific um, projections. Uh, there are 20,000 cars uh, daily on Jefferson State Street. State Highway, so that's the, the impact there is going to be negligible. It, really. It's going to be negligible. That's where we anticipate most of the traffic coming onto our site from <laughs> would be Jefferson Street. There would be possibly a few from, from Midland, but um, it's... it's 90%? Like more, probably more. More probably than more. that. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you, Mr. Hammer. Uh, I think the takeaway from the traffic analysis and what we worked on in the last couple of weeks since your last meeting is to change the Midland uh, uh, entrance to a right in, right out only, and to guarantee that all other entrances on Midland will be closed permanently. These are recommendations by the Homeowners Association, which we concur in, and we want to make mention of those before the zoning board today. A couple of other things to mention oh, uh, before I forget it. Uh, we worked on this traffic analysis with Mr. Trisna and Mr. Lubash, who are present here today, who, as you know, are the traffic analysts uh, uh, for the city of Joliet, and they concur uh, in the traffic analysis and the report. Um, a couple other things that the neighbors were concerned about that I want to mention to the uh, members of the zoning board is, uh, as Mr. Hennessy will certainly know, uh, this uh, site happened to be a former Sinclair gas station a long, long time ago. Um, and uh, there are no gas tanks there on property. They were removed a long time ago. We did uh, phase ones and phase twos to ensure that the property was totally clean of any environmental issues whatsoever before purchasing it, and they all came out fine. So that is not an issue. Uh, the other thing is uh, that's not really shown on the drawing. There will be what's called a pork chop, you know, at the Midland entrance to, in order to prohibit uh, people from turning left into the site or from turning left out of the site, which was a concern from the neighbors. So with all of those uh, caveats and uh, additional uh, information, you know, we are recommending approval of the uh, four variances here before you today. Well, historically speaking, we'll be tearing down former Mayor Girani's barber shop, which yes. is the little place on the back there. Yeah, we I should put know, a thought that was going to be a historical building. I guess he had to do that earlier, yeah. so. See, there's no respect <clears throat> anymore, I'm telling you. I, yeah, that's, you know, I, I hadn't even thought of that. That is, that is a yeah, very... He's out of office. <coughs> he must have gotten poor Tom. That I've happened to be where I got my first haircut when we moved to town New in 1964, yeah. Okay, anyone else you want to have speak before us, sir? Any questions by the board? Um, what are the plans for the um, eastmost part of uh, the building? The east building? Yes. The east building is an insurance building that will remain. They're tearing down the other buildings on the site. Okay. And where's parking for that building? Parking that will be shared with the restaurant. Staff has approved the, the parking. There will be similar parking for both the insurance building and the restaurant. And the, the specific needs of that insurance uh, business and the restaurant are compatible so that we can, they fall within the uh, 16 necessary spaces. Okay. How many employees are in that business? Don't, uh, pardon? Oh, it's insurance business. 
one one employee. So that would take up one spot Correct. for me. And the hours of that business? Regular business hours, nine to five, okay. Monday through Friday. Okay. Any other comments? Anybody in the audience wish to speak in favor? Favor? Come on forward. Hello. You must swear you in. You swear the evidence you're about to present is the truth under penalty of law. I do. May I have your name and address? My name is Jan Norski. I live at 116 Dwight Avenue in Reedwood neighborhood. I'm here representing the Reedwood Neighborhood Association as their president. Um, there was some misconception uh, earlier on uh, that the Reedwood neighborhood uh, association was against this business. That's farthest from the truth. We are 100% for Nick Skeetos going in there. Uh, after I got wind of it and um, did some investigating and talked to some people, I, as you know, I work for the city, but it was easy for me to walk over to their office and ask them some questions. Um, I actually took a drive out to Payless Heights and saw their existing building. I uh, was assured by Mr. Torrey that this building that they're going to build is going to be even nicer. Um, it's exactly what we need on Jefferson Street. Um, the concerns we had were the, was Midland Avenue. Um, they were allayed by the uh, report that they were going to close the two northernmost uh, curb entrances uh, and then put in a right in only, right out only uh, on the southernmost uh, Midland Avenue an, uh, entrance. Uh, we asked a question about the gas tanks. They were uh, removed already, that's fine. Uh, the question I have, and, um, uh, and looking at the picture up on the screen right now, on Midland Avenue there, and actually on the whole site there, if the uh, two curb entrances on Midland are going to be closed, are they, my question is, are they going to be curbed? Or I, I like the landscaping. I think it's going to be a beautiful addition to Jefferson Street. But my question is, are the two existing uh, right, curb sir. entrances, are they going to be have a curb put in from that southernmost Mike, are those going to be closed or just sealed up or what i'm not sure um i'm not sure i understand the question well if you look at between those there's three entrances on midland the okay. two northernmost between them there's a curve a city curve oh oh will the curbs actually be replaced well they they are going to be extended i believe so and yeah yeah okay well, that's fine. That's yeah. all our questions have been allayed. Uh, we are 100% for it. Uh, I hope that they continue, not continue, but I hope they, they actually come through with the landscaping that I see there. And even more, I think it's going to be a beautiful addition to the city of Joliet. And we hope that more of this type of business um, comes to Jefferson Street between Rainer and Midland. <laughs> yeah, and the one lady that was concerned that, uh, about the garbage container she said she was claustrophobic and was opposed to the fence or something. I don't know. Well, there was... We solved her, that problem. <laughs> yeah, her, com her comment was that previous um, fast food places that were there uh, brought uh, un unwanted uh, rodents and stuff. And I'm pretty sure that these folks have shown that they are um, top-notch um, uh, owners of properties and they will make sure that that's going to be taken care of. We are... We cannot be happier to have them as neighbors in the Reedwood Neighborhood Association. If a problem comes up, I hope I can have a dialogue with them and say, this has been brought up at a Reedwood Neighborhood Association meeting. What can we do about it? And I think that they would probably reply um, to, to, to the affirmative. Thank you for your comments. Appreciate right. it. Anyone else wish to speak in favor? <clears throat> Swear the evidence you're about to present is the truth under penalty of law. Yes. Name and address. Kirk Beeler, 411 Reedwood Drive, Joliet. Um, I'm here just representing myself, and I would like to say that this is the type of business that I really would like to see along Jefferson Street. It, it will be an improvement of a high-quality, high-traffic business, and hopefully this will not be the last one, that, that, that this type of business will, will bring more businesses of this type and, and generally um, increase the value and increase the, the, the status of the Jefferson Street neighborhood, or Jefferson Street in the, by the Reedwood neighborhood. Thank you for your comments, sir. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Ma'am? <clears throat> you swear the evidence you're about to present is the truth under a penalty of law. I do. Name and address. My name is Lorena Delgado, 12 South Midland Avenue, Joliet 60436. Um, 
I'm not so sure that I want to characterize my position as opposition. I'd have a couple questions, though. Um, if I'm reading the drawing correctly that's up, I see 15 parking spots, not 16. I might be reading it wrong, but um, I see 15, and that includes four that will be used by staff, three for the restaurant, one for the insurance, and then any potential customers, and then we have one handicap up there. So I'm still a little concerned about the, the traffic. I know the peak hours for the restaurant don't coincide, coincide with the regular um, school hours, but after school is three, two and three o'clock. Between two and five, it gets really congested in that area. Um, so <coughs> right around that five o'clock mark, I, I, I foresee a problem. On, on days when District 86 dismisses early, it's usually 11.15 like they did yesterday. It's, it's right within that 11 to one peak hour or two for the restaurant. Um, so I just wanted to state those concerns and I, I'm wondering if someone could show me the 16 parking spaces because I see 15. There are 16. It, it is 16. 15, 16. Yeah. Do you want to? One, two, do you want three, them pointed four, out? Five, or you want to use the mouse? Six, seven, to just eight, point them out. Nine, ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Two here. Uh huh. Three, four, five, six. Seven. Okay, that six one that shows it right by the arrow where the traffic's going to be going out to. That's a parking spot. The so same. That's a that's a traffic pattern into a parking spot. This is the traffic pattern. Oh, okay, so that's where I was reading it wrong. Thank you. I thought that was actually traffic coming out. Um, so those, those were my comments. I mean, the insurance is going to be sharing that parking spot. One of them is for the employee and at least another one for customers there. Um, I just want, um, okay. would like for you guys all to consider that before you make your, your final decision. All right. Thank you for your comments. Anyone else in opposition? Chair, close the petition to the floor and ask the board for discussion and a motion. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the petition. Call the roll, please. Mr. Graham? Aye. Mr. Riggs? Aye. Mr. Thompson? Aye. Ms. Darby? Aye. Mr. Ferguson? Aye. Mr. Hennessy? Aye. Anything else, Mr. Uh, Secretary? I just have a reminder again to the uh, zoning board members that uh, save the date Saturday, April 7th. Um, I will send you more information on the venue, but the morning of eight, Saturday, April 7th, the Will County Governmental League is offering uh, plan commissioner, planning and zoning board commissioner uh, training, which will have a nominal fee. I believe the city will pay for your nominal portion for the breakfast. Uh, but I believe the hours are from 8.30 a.m. till noon. So it's a half day session. Somewhere here in Joliet, um, I'll, I'll let you know where the venue is going, going to be. But it's open to all Will County plan commissions, zoning boards, elected officials, city staff, mayors, everybody's invited. What was that date again? April Saturday, April, April 7th. Okay, through the minutes of last meeting, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those in favor of adjournment signify by saying aye. 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 Meeting is adjourned. Be careful,